Kids love to play with fire trucks. But have you ever wondered what it would be like to be a real firefighter? Hi kids, I'm Fireman Dave. Well, I'm not really a firefighter, but the real firefighters have agreed to let me pretend for the day. So you and I are going to find out what it takes to be a firefighter and all about all the great equipment they use. So what do you say we check it out? Most firefighters live at the fire station when they're on duty. When they aren't fighting fires, they have chores to do, just like the rest of us. Well, you were asking me what it's like to be a firefighter. Firefighter Dave, well, I'll tell you what it's like. It's probably the best job in the world. I've held a number of jobs, and I've been with the fire service now for about 15 years and I really enjoy it. We work 24-hour shifts. And there's eight of us at our station. Therefore, we have to get along. This is my second family. I have a family at home, and I have a family in the fire service. Our actual work day starts at 8 o'clock. We start doing what we call station and equipment maintenance. Every day, we're responsible for maintaining the equipment, maintaining the station, mopping the floors, cleaning out the restrooms, washing the fire trucks, making sure all the equipment is ready to go. Because when you call 911 and we're not ready, the whole system falls apart. Fire Department Emergency. What's the problem, ma'am? And your address? Is that a house or an apartment? And your name? And what's your phone number, Agatha? OK, get everybody out of the house and we'll send the fire department, OK? When an emergency call comes in, the firefighters have to be ready for action. And if you're not ready, you'll get left behind. Well, it looks like Fireman Dave missed the fire truck. I'll just have to try to be faster next time. Firefighters have to be specially equipped in the clothes they wear as well in order to stay safe when fighting fires. This is Firefighter Cliff, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the specialized clothing that they have to wear. Well, Firefighter Dave, let's start at the bottom of the outfit, and we'll just work our way up. All right. You notice the boots that you have on. Those are steel-toed rubber boots. Those are to protect the firefighter's feet. You go into a burning building, a lot of times there might be nails or glass or something of that nature. So it helps protect the feet by sharp objects and also the toes are steel in case something falls on them. Mm -hmm. Now the pants and the jacket that you're wearing are made out of a material called Nomex. Now this is a flame retardant material. It helps to reduce the flame or the heat on the uniform. Now also, you wear your helmet. 
It's a hard plastic. It helps to protect your head in case of things falling from the sky, that sort of thing. Now, one thing that you have to remember when you're inside a building in a fire, although we have all of this good equipment on, it's kind of a false sense of security. If you get into a burning building, the temperature can get very, very hot, sometimes 1,200 degrees. With all this protective clothing on, you're not going to really feel all of that heat. That's why firefighters work on what we call the buddy system. We go into a building together, we protect each other. If I see that you're getting in trouble, or maybe you're getting too close to the fire, I can tap you on the shoulder and say, come on, Firefighter Dave, let's get out. It's getting too dangerous. So that's why we wear the protective clothing that you have on, the helmet, the pants, the coat, the boots, and also our gloves. Helps us do our job a little better. All right, I guess we're ready to go. Fight a fire. You bet. I guess I forgot to shut off the valve. I suppose you'd like to see that again. Good one. Well, I guess being a firefighter isn't as easy as I thought. From now on, Fireman Dave is going to leave the firefighting up to the real firefighters. These big legs are put out one by one to stabilize the fire truck so the big ladder can be put in the air. Once these support legs are in place, they keep the truck from tipping over, the firefighters prepare to raise the big ladder. The operator must be sure that there are no dangerous power lines to get in the way. The big ladder and basket can go 100 feet in the air.
fire truck is a real complicated machine, but in the cockpit, it's pretty much like a regular truck, except there are lots of buttons and switches. I asked one of the real firefighters to show me how they work. A fire truck works pretty much the same as a regular truck drives. We have a lot of extra buttons to, to deal with, though, and I'm going to show you what some of those buttons do today. Uh, up here, we have buttons just like your regular truck does for lights and headlights and marker lights and those things. But then we also have over here one switch that turns on all the red lights all at the same time. Uh, I can turn off those lights individually if I want, but one switch will turn them on all at the same time when I turn that switch on. Then uh, down here on the floorboard, we have some buttons that if I push with my foot, they will activate the siren and make the siren go. And then over here is another one for the uh, air horn. Um, and then we have one more thing up here. It's another kind of siren. So we have two. And this siren is the electronic siren. And we can turn this on just by turning a switch up here. Well, if you listen close, you probably notice that fire trucks have different kinds of sirens. And they come from different places on the fire truck. This machine has three different sirens. This one here is the mechanical siren. That's the main siren that you hear most of the time. Then right here, this is an electronic siren. It sounds more like an ambulance siren. They use that occasionally, too. Now, these are the air horns. These are the big horns that honk to warn the cars to get out of the way. engine and this is uh, used for pumping water however we do carry a couple of ladders and this is how we store them and where we keep them back here is where the firefighter sits and that's uh, where he rides on his way to the fire and in this compartment we carry our water jug and that's so that uh, when we're fighting a fire we get uh, a little dehydrated we can uh, have a little water and we carry fuses and assorted tools and things in that compartment and then here we have our, what we call our engineer's pump panel. And this is where all the gauges and valves and things are that we can make water, divert water from one discharge to another or open up another valve to, to let the water come from the hydrant into the pump. And here we carry extra air bottles. And these are the same bottles that we wear in our breathing apparatus. Back here we have the engine that drives this, this engine, it makes it go and makes the pump work. We also have the hose. We have our four inch hose and this there's enough hose here in this hose bed to go from here to about five blocks down the street. And on that side we have two and a half inch hose. And there's enough hose in there to go 12 football fields long. And we use that hose to hook up to a fire hydrant and then get water from the fire hydrant to where the fire is. This is what we call a monitor. This is what we use on big fires because it can flow a thousand gallons of water a minute. We can move it to any side of the engine we want and it's so powerful that it can knock walls down. In these compartments here, we keep our, keep our first aid supplies. And we use these because we go out on a lot of people who have been hurt or are sick. And this is basically what we need to take care of them. One of the most dangerous jobs being a firefighter is to work on the bomb squad. This is the vehicle that pulls the trailer that has the container that holds the bomb. Now, this is where they put the bomb if they think it might explode. This container is very, very thick, as you can see, and it's shaped in a V form so that if the bomb does explode, it explodes up into the air and not out to the sides where it can hurt people or vehicles. The clothing that the bomb squad wears is really interesting. What do you say we take a look at that now? This is what we call a self-containment suit or a bomb suit. When the bomb technician goes up to work on a suspected bomb, he has to have this suit on. And as you can see down here, over his boots, he has this part of the suit to protect his feet. This is real hard right here. This protects his legs, comes on up, and they're kind of like coveralls. This protects his body in case the bomb should go off. 
Now he wears a jacket that goes over this, and what we'll do now, we'll put the jacket on. Now this is very, very heavy. Okay, and as you can see, it fully protects him when he has this on. Let me step right under here. We'll go ahead and put the helmet on. Okay, and he's all set to go work on a device. He's fully protected. In case anything happens, kind of looks like a spaceman. Fire boats are also used in fighting some fires. They come in all sizes and shapes. The piece of equipment you see behind me is a fire truck. Its primary function is to transport men and heavy equipment to the fire scene. It carries no water, it carries no hose. All of the equipment on it is used primarily for forcible entry, for salvage, and for overhaul operations. Now we'll step a little closer, take a little closer look. We'll start off by taking a look at the cab. This is where the captain and the engineer ride in the fire apparatus. The engineer is the individual that drives and operates the unit. The captain, of course, is in charge of the crew. On this particular piece of equipment, we have four men, the captain, an engineer, and two firefighters. Now, the firefighters ride back up in this area. This is known as a jump seat. As you can see, they ride facing to the rear. When we get a call, the firefighter gets on the unit. He's putting on his turnout coat, his pants, his other gear, and he's also putting on the breathing apparatus. That way, when we get to the fire scene, he's ready to go to work. He just has to step off the unit, and he's ready to go. In this particular compartment, as you can see, we've got what looks to be a large fan, which is exactly what it is. This is a gasoline-powered smoke ejector. When we go into a building that's full of smoke, we have to uh, get the smoke out in order for the firefighter to come in and fight the fire. We do this by using these large fans. We carry two of these on the unit. This is the compartment that contains the levers that operate our outriggers and that we can raise and lower the ladder. Behind this sheet up here is where we keep all of our ladders. All the ladders in the back. As you can see it just on buttons. We've got all of our ladders, 16, 20 foot, and the big 40 footer. Over on this side, we have another 16, another 20, and a 35 foot. Also in this compartment, and they're kind of hard to see, but if you look real close, back up in here, we have what we call pike poles. Long poles with a hook on the end. We use those poles to pull down ceilings inside a building if we need to get up into the attic area. Okay, I'm now up in the basket of the unit. 
As uh, we told you previously, this will go 100 feet in the air. Now you see this big red thing here? That's a nozzle. There's basically no difference between this nozzle than the nozzle you have at home on your garden hose. The only difference is this nozzle just a little bit bigger. It works on the same principle. We can flow at maximum gallonage, a thousand gallons a minute, through this nozzle. And all you have to do to operate it is just to turn it like this, and you get a wide pattern, or you can get a very sharp, definite pattern. By turning this wheel, we can rotate it from left to right. By loosening it up, as you can see, up and down. This piece of equipment is used primarily for large fires. A large building where we need to get up above the fire, shoot water down on it to literally drown out the fire. Another important piece of equipment used to fight fires is the helicopter. It helps with rescues, in moving equipment, and it can also carry small amounts of water. This is a big one. There are many different kinds of firefighting vehicles. This is an airport fire truck, and as you can see, not all firefighting vehicles come in a color red. This is one of the biggest firefighting trucks. It's yellow, it costs almost half a million dollars, and it's for fighting some very special kinds of fires. Hi, I'm Mike Strauss. I'm with Ontario Airport Fire Department, and today you're looking at one of the biggest trucks in the fire service today. This particular vehicle is specifically designed to fight airport firefighting. Uh, what that means is if there's a plane crash, we'll go ahead and roll, take this truck out and we'll squirt water on it. It's specifically designed to fight airport fires. And what we have here on the front are what we call two turrets. And what they do is they just squirt water out of them from here and here. And the top one there squirts water out at a rate of about 1,200 gallons a minute and that's about 15 to 20 bathtubs full of water a minute. And the bottom one squirts out at a little bit lower rate of about 500 gallons a minute. And what, what also comes out of the water is what we call foam. Like uh, if you take like a bubble bath, you have like foam sitting on top of the water and that's what comes out of this as well. Okay, now we're inside the cab and we wear these headphones so we can communicate with the tower which tells us if there's a plane coming our way or not and to communicate with other firefighters and other fire trucks. And inside the cab, what we, we control most of our firefighting by what we call joysticks. And they're just like a basic video game at your videos, at your video stores or whatever. And you can control most of your firefighting, the turrets that I showed you earlier, by, by moving the joystick back and forth. And it'll squirt water whichever way you turn it. And it's, everything in here is basically just like driving a regular car. You've got your gas pedal, and you've got your brake pedal, and then you've got your gear shift steering wheel and horn. Different types of firefighters use different types of protective equipment. As you can see, I've got a yellow coat on, and you guys here at the airport wear silver coats. Right. Uh, they're basically designed for the same thing, to protect you when you go into a fire. Um, the reason why they're, they're aluminized is to reflect the heat a little bit more than, than the standard Nomex firefighting, and they're a little bit heavier. Um, they're aluminized suits, so they're a little heavier in, in uh, they're able to retain a little more heat, reflect a little more heat, because at a fire, when it burns, it burns close to 2,000 degrees, the, the fuel itself. So it enables us a little more time to, to be able to fight the fire real close at hand. And what we have down here are just basically the same thing with pants, and everybody has the regular fireman boots. And, um, well, here's a question for you, Dave. Do you know why uh, firemen have red suspenders? I have no idea. So hold up, there's the pants.
At this training facility, future firefighters are learning the skills that they will need to properly and safely do their job. establishing command at a three-story industrial building. We have smoke and flame showing. All units code three. This is a condition B fire. My command post will be located in front of the building to the west. Truck 131, please come in and take utilities and ventilation. We're laying a line. Experienced firefighters have to keep up their skills as well. This is a practice facility where they start the fires themselves and then practice by putting them out. Even putting out practice fires is dangerous business. statement we can make to kids don't play with matches fire is our friend but it's also our enemy you don't want to mess with fire in any way shape or form lighters matches leave those in the hands of adults if you have a fire in your home leave your house you saw how rapidly this fire built up and intensified if you're a civilian inside a home we went in with protective clothing protective breathing apparatus and you can see the temperatures i've melted the shield on my helmet so that's the kind of temperature without these protective clothing you would die almost right away get out of the house Go to a neighbor, call the fire department from a neighbor's house, call 911 in most areas, advise them of the location of the fire, do not hang up the phone until instructed to do so by a dispatcher. Give us the description, the type of call, the type of fire that you have, and if you can, on our arrival, let us know if everyone's outside of the home. If you can have a meeting place where all the family members can meet, say at the end of a driveway, on the sidewalk, something of that effect, that helps us. Then we know if the father and mother are there saying, I've got all my kids outside, we know it's just a structure fire with no lives threatened. Our firefighters don't have to take undue risks. We don't want to hurt firefighters. We don't want to lose civilians. Oh, hi. Listen, I'm a little embarrassed. This uh, firefighting thing didn't really work out the way Fireman Dave had planned, even though I was just pretending. But they put me to work, and they tell me if I do real well at this, I can polish the truck tomorrow. And remember, kids, Fire is serious business. Don't play with fire. 